In one year, Disney grossed over $2.7 billion on Avengers Endgame and lost $170 million on Dark Phoenix and other titles. Turns out that in the 2010s, not even bankable stars, big marketing campaigns, or impressive CGI can guarantee box office success. We're going to take a look at exactly what went wrong with some of the most expensive movie flops of the last decade. We've drawn up a list using reported losses from various media outlets. I'm telling you, I'm nobody. Jupiter Ascending. The problem wasn't its cast members Mila Kunis and Channing Tatum, or even the bizarre plot of a cleaning lady with an interplanetary inheritance. It was overspending. Directors the Wachowskis had previously worked with Studio 8 president Jeff Robinov on the 1999 hit The Matrix. Robinov signed off on casting and production design and approved a huge budget, but left the studio before the film's completion. Fixing VFX issues pre-release also added to the mix. The movie opened to poor reviews and you can guess what happened next. Name a film from the past decade featuring anthropomorphized shape-shifting cars and trucks. You're probably thinking of a Transformers movie. And there's a reason why you wouldn't know the bomb Monster Trucks, about a high school senior who discovers a creature that feeds on oil. Part of its failure can be blamed on a lack of on-screen talent, with Lucas Till not providing much of an audience draw. Also, in the age of successful animated features, targeting the kids' market with a live-action Cars movie that wasn't based on a well-known Nickelodeon or Hasbro property was a big risk. I like a good adventure. I'm looking for an adventure of my own. This movie not only changed its title months before opening, but also underwent a change in director. The movie was originally titled Jack the Giant Killer, which suggests that it was planned to be a grittier, edgier retelling of Roald Dahl's Jack and the Beanstalk. It also suffered from a glut of similar releases. It came out shortly after Jeremy Renner's Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, another childlike fantasy flick. You didn't eat your broccoli. No broccoli, no TV. Disney's animated feature sold just $6.9 million in tickets in its North America opening weekend. The plotline of a child whose mother is taken away from him was off-putting for family audiences, as was the unique animation style. Producer Robert Zemeckis opted for motion capture instead of hand-drawn or Pixar style of computer animation, which led to comments about characters' unnatural facial expressions being terrifying. I long for the day that I can come back for you and explain everything. By 2015, Starring in crowd pleasers such as Les Miserables and the X-Men franchise had to put Hugh Jackman in a bankable position as a leading man. But this adaptation of the classic J. M. Barry children's story Peter Pan was criticised for its simple plot and pantomime performances. After flopping with domestic audiences, it went on to underperform in the world's second largest film market, China. Why? it was released during a summer of competitive, family-friendly films, such as French animated feature The Little Prince and Marvel's Ant-Man. Poor Hugh. It is inevitable. King Arthur Legend of the Sword was panned by critics and made just $15 million in its opening weekend. This would be manageable for a small-budget British movie, but it was the exact opposite a Guy Ritchie-directed Warner Bros flick that cost millions. So why did it tank so bad? Idris Elba and Colin Farrell are rumoured to have turned down roles, leaving Jude Law as the only A-lister. And the story wasn't new. Home audiences were already familiar with an adaptation of the King Arthur legend starring Clive Owen, which flopped in 2004. Nowadays, he's the internet's boyfriend. You're breathtaking! But in 2013, Keanu Reeves hadn't had a hit since 2003's The Matrix Revolutions. Samurai fantasy adventure 47 Ronin followed a string of misses for the star, such as Constantine and The Day the Earth Stood Still. 
the movie's release date didn't help. Competing in a December box office already packed with The Wolf of Wall Street, The Hobbit sequel, American Hustle, Saving Mr. Banks, and Anchorman 2. <sighs> Boy. You need to be a committed movie buff to watch all those releases over the festive period. But we love you no matter what, Keanu. Producer Peter Jackson of Lord of the Rings fame, taking on a beloved seven book series by Philip Reeve, sounds like a license to print money. But Maud Lengens took a crushingly low $7.5 million across 3,103 theatres at the domestic box office. There were some obvious reasons it flopped. Lack of star power, confusing narrative about cannibalistic megacities, and a woman with a mysterious destiny. But what really crushed it was the surprising box office smashes of release-adjacent movies. Clint Eastwood's The Mule made $17.5 million in its opening, one of the highest ever for an Eastwood movie. And family audiences were drawn to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, which piggybacked on the superhero trend. That's a copy. There are negative movie reviews, and then there are the reviews that The Lone Ranger got on its opening weekend. On paper, it sounded great, reuniting Johnny Depp with the team behind Pirates of the Caribbean and adding Army Hammer, who is a rising star thanks to The Social Network. But critics called this 149-minute outing too long and clunky. The Guardian reported that the filmmakers tried to scale down the budget after being spooked by other modern westerns bombing, such as 2011's Cowboys and Aliens, but the budget soon spiralled again, to the tune of $215 million. Coming in at number one is one of the biggest box office flops of all time. Disney's John Carter. What really killed this one was the trailers. First was the teaser, featuring a morose cover of Arcade Fire's My Body is a Cage, which featured no real action. From dancing with the one I love. Further trailers displayed the movie as the most generic, boring blockbuster. It had no real star power and a glut of special effects. Andrew Stanton, who also directed Finding Nemo and Wall-E, reportedly overrode Disney marketing execs to have the final say on the promotional material, which, let's be honest, was an error. Even the Of Mars was ditched from the title. The movie is based on Edgar Rice Burroughs' 1917 story, A Princess of Mars. But just John Carter was as vague as it was going to get. Critics weren't kind to it either. It went on to eventually lose close to $224 million. A little nod here to the also rants, including Deepwater Horizon, How Do You Know, and The Promise. Did you go to see any of these box office disasters? Comment below.